But never I say my pen dream TV. Pen dream TV there. I see them. Yopo. Me mo akwa ba eli ba pen dream TV. So me sure say any day they can watch it. I best subscribe to channel them. No I click the bell. No so say the news too. I also want to be to me. I can watch it in time. Ya no acha ma for frost on saka. Aye, John Dramani Mahamani, a da a friend of Joyce Bauer Mukdari, and I ever interview Radio Gold, so no didn't send me to Jaffa. Aye, I buy a tear coin as you say, I could find any bow me a buying in a matre. Now, send me now, John Mahama, a da a friend of Joyce Bauer Mukdari, the other to Jaffa. We're interviewing him now, where say, yeah, a more Casafa, a year twenty twenty three year under review, no FR mine home. Then on a Joyce Bauer Mukdari, a day better to Jaffa. Yeni na ye nim de ekoso o mem ha na e hwema o man we mu pa de eye aban a otisu yi onye ahwe kran fa ma o ban ya eye krono corruption ene tax akese na o de ato o man yi so na ye hwenia ma akoso free mira aban betna ko nya yesu a that mo se gana ya ye mo bo pa aban di afa kwan a en sena en fata so na o bisa se adenti na ye da so etu ya eye covid levy na abain boshe bebra o sheshe ye onye ye na min kasa bebre ye nsaka video nwa ha ye mkwa ne niyama bebra ye mahama ye de friend of joyce bawa mungtari ye kafa ako fwa done ba wami abain yon ye yin yin ayen kwa he but remember that government has failed some judge to invest as they should in health look at our facility called kolebu and you know where we started from all the attempts to re-equip, the attempts to rebuild that facility, and still. And why do we still have that COVID levy? I just asked you this morning. Hmm. This one, you have to, you did it, you did it, you did it, you did it. I don't understand. What are we using that facility for? The 111 agenda. One, one, one. one, one, one really. But let me also sing the praises of the health personnel at UGMC. Fantastic guys. A place where the equipment is there and readily available. And what they do day in, day out to save very, very critical lives. But I think that one thing we need to work on is attitude, especially in some of those facilities. Maybe it's a conversation that we need to take to the next level. Exactly. So I think that these are some of the very highs and lows of the year in retros. But yes, to all the suffering Ghanaians. I think my heart goes out to them. And you saw what happened this morning. It's always the case. Mm -hmm. You walk into a room, as soon as you appear there, I was in court a few days ago trying to locate a document of mine, and a young lady approached me just like someone did this morning. Exactly. She had a beautifully written letter, and I was shocked to realize that all she wanted was some small figures just to go mm -hmm. back to school, etc. And Obi, this is really the reality that we are all living. I have traveled the length and breadth of this country. And there's one thing I keep saying. We must all be very sure that anybody who wants to serve in public office must understand the country, must have seen what we all see every day, yeah. must also understand what it is we understand, must comprehend why you are even in government, Thanks, why you are leading, and reasons why your party is even in office. To be very honest with you, look at our rural urban migration, Look at the disparity between the rich and the poor. You know, the middle class somehow is very shaky. So there's yeah, just the so super far. and then the very low yeah. end. The middle is ah. hata hata. The, the haircut <laughs> to wipe out the middle class. Is it just the haircut? Is that the haircut? Well, Nothing else. else. Today, 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 if you have money, where will you invest it? Tell me. So that's it. The DDB. It's wiped out the, exactly. the middle class. There's no middle class. I mean, people's yeah. pensions. I'm telling you, lifetime Look patients. These people just absolutely, you know, and that was clearly one of the lowest moments of the year. Exactly, you know. I mean, yeah. I remember vividly the photographs of all those pensioners gathered yeah. outside the Ministry of Finance until date. Nothing has yet to them. hear the Honourable Minister even say anything to even try and ameliorate their suffering, try and you know even pacify them one way or the other. It's almost as if. There's no emotions involved. Isn't it amazing? The whole chief, uh, former chief justice. Yes, yes. Leading yes. that. Yes, yes. And nothing is done. Yes. So far, exactly. And even talk about the former chief justice. But the ordinary pensioners, mm. you know, those ones who have names that nobody would recognize, but who have worked very hard to earn these monies. 
people who retired from campus like Talo, look at the extent of their sacrifice, you know, the challenges they go through. Look at the stories about people trying to buy medications for their old uh, mm -hmm. families, their children mm -hmm. who are unwell, mm -hmm. name it, you know. Look, there are so many things that have gone wrong and I think that these are the right wrongs that we must do everything to right. And look, let me say one thing to our members of parliament. They've done a yeoman's job. Yes, there have been a lot of complaints. People probably expected a lot more aggression of sorts, you know. People wanted to see them challenge the status quo more. But we all understand that in the current constitutional dispensation, the numbers matter. I so. And I think that really is also one of the challenges that they have grappled. But of course, be that as it may, I think that all of that notwithstanding, they've done a fantastic job. But look at, for example, the economy. Look at where inflation is. Try going to borrow money. Try looking for a facility to even support whatever little business it is that you have. Look at all the properties that people actually go out there and construct. What happens at the end of the day? They, most of those buildings are empty. You know, you understand. And yet there are people who don't even have anywhere to live in. Mm. I remember when this uh, flood thing happened and people wanted to move into the uh, is it Saglemi housing, Saglemi housing. Uh, facilities, for example. And they're still empty. And they're so many of these Absolutely. So, I, I mean, I think that these are some of the things that we need to work through. If free SHS is good, it is working, I think that people should be in school longer and look at the conversations about the number of weeks the kids mm -hmm. stay in school. One of my staff mm -hmm. was telling me I the guess. last time that this year he's paid school fees four times. But and I'm at, thinking that what yes, happened to the, the, look the three? Letter, look at the letter this morning. And I like the fact that, look, some George is here. Oh, that's they, a they beautiful handwriting. Look at the handwriting. She even added sure. her photos and everything. Everything and oh. his siblings. Look, this is it for... The eldest one, and you you know, it's a very, it's just a story. Look, tuition is here, 595 Ghana cities. And this is Royal Kings and Queens something learning thing. I mean, where are they going to find that kind of money from? You know, all she wants to do is to go to school, nothing more. Look at the letter. It's, it's, it's a very heart-wrenching, very, you know, very oh. sad. And she's a young girl. Can you imagine? You know, to struggle for and, and you know this is I noticed something. The child is not just looking for opportunities for themselves. They are also making a case for their parents exactly. and why their parents are unable to do A, B, or C for them. You know, there's a good reason why maybe someone like me probably is not very rich. Because you just can't help. What you don't want to do is to see people suffer. You don't want to see someone go hungry or sleep on an empty stomach. I think that really for me is one of the biggest things of 2023 that so many people are even more impoverished you know you walk into a pharmacy for example you see a lady probably about 75 over 70 mm -hmm. and she has a prescription and then she's she walks helpless. in and they tell her how much it is and you can see that the person stands there looking ask us what do they do how many of us in the queue would notice this? Mm -hmm. Even we are grappling with our own problems. Mm -hmm. you, you, you understand? I think that another conversation we must start looking at very closely is the national health insurance. Some judge, should this be an insurance in a country like ours for everybody? You, you understand? Mm -hmm. Take someone who works for you, who wants to go for some surgery, for example. You go there and tell them you have a national health insurance card. But you know that that insurance will not cover the surgery that the person needs. A lady goes in for a fibroid operation and when she gets there, she's supposed to have a full hysterectomy. How will they pay for it if they have nobody? And I have actually been a beneficiary even of the generosity of human beings. <laughs> because after I made the deposit, I had forgotten the lady was still on admission. Apparently they wouldn't discharge her because she had other bills because they had to have a full hysterectomy. A few days ago, I heard some good Samaritans were there because initially they said, oh, we wouldn't pay for so we won't pay for you. But a few days ago, some people walked in and fortunately, she got someone who was happy to take up her bill. So to these really good Samaritans, they also add up to the highs for the year, you know, and these are just ordinary people. So we don't even want to use ourselves as an example of the interventions we make. But look at all these other people. Look, Obi, I think that the National Democratic Congress is certainly the People's Party. It's not just our manifestos being designed or you know, described as a people's manifestos. It is also because our policies are people-oriented. You know, I tell people all the time, one of the biggest and the lasting personality traits of John Mahama mm -hmm. is his humility. It's how he continues to touch lives and touch the hearts of people. How he continues to be concerned that the common man is hungry 
and just needs something to eat. Yes, his life will always be a little bit better than all the others. But the question is that it is in the equity and the effort he spends on all the others. I think that these are the conversations that we must all take very, very seriously. Look, the NDC is poised to win this election. All that our foot soldiers, our party supporters, our members of parliament, our executive, we should be bolder. We should tackle the issues that concern the good people of Ghana. We should also rise up and support our leaders in every way possible to deliver and to succeed. You know, there's a certain level of commitment that you want to see. It must be 150%, not just the level of 80 or 50%. No, it must be above 100. Yeah. It's like the good student who strives for excellence. Mm -hmm. And when they hit excellence, they get an A, they end up with an A asterisk. There must be a very good reason. And then there are also those other good students who end up getting just a good mark, but will never get that asterisk that they require. So we must, as a grouping, as a political party, rise up fully to support what we believe in. What we must avoid is to allow the new patriotic party to run roughshod over us. The stealing, the cheating, the corruption must end. Because you see, for all the corruption that we have or that we are witnessing, it is a common Ghanaian who suffers the yes, most. Yeah. The ones whose names have no recognition, who know nobody, Obi, they really go through a lot and I think that it is for the common citizen that I want to add my voice that in the year under review they have gotten poorer they have suffered enormous injustice and unfairness and they continue to suffer why should we have all these displaced citizens all these jobless youth and yet we have a political party that wants to remain in power and still continues to buy votes. Look at how monies were wasted in Asin North, for example. <laughs> but you know the beauty of it? God is still in the miracle business. Because despite all the monies that were expended, what happened? They still lost. Our judiciary must stand on the side of the people and stand firm. We have a new chief justice in office a female chief justice, a female practitioner that all of us grew up practicing with and knowing very, very well. We expect her to do more to make that office relevant to the common person seeking justice, for example. Really? I think that is also very important. Our electoral commission, I find that they are too much in the face of the public. We travel around the world. How often do you hear about returning officers for elections? I mean, seriously, it is something that I find personally very, 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 very uncomfortable. There is just too much interaction. The question is why? why? So please, at educators, you are in parliament. You wake up in the morning and decide that elections, uh, the, the people must stop voting at 3 p.m. Who's, whose decision is that to make? And in consultation with who? And why would we even come out to make such an announcement? How many, a year shy of because. the election? And then look, Sam George, there's also another thing that I ask myself day in, day out. Genuinely, how do we expect the Electoral Commission to function with all this extreme, you know, suspicion around them? I think it's because they are too, they, 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 they're out in the public, they're way too often. Their interaction is too much. Maybe we need to look at this thing carefully. Is this the case that the EC is now like a, a normal member of parliament or a normal CEO or all the other people? Why did the constitution give them this very unique rule? You know, I think that maybe these are all things that have happened in the last few years. And then it reminds me of something that Obama said when he came here. Look, we need stronger institutions with better leadership. Because you see, if you have a great leader in place, the institutions will work. If you have good policies in place, the institutions will work. If we all agree that this is the role of the Electoral Commissioner or the role of the Electoral Commission, why would they have to keep coming every day? You remember the issues to do with the constitutional review process yeah. a few years ago? When President Mahama even went to Parliament to ask for them to agree for us to, to bring the, uh, the election day forward into November, into November because Christmas is a very busy time, December usually there's enormous pressure, etc. They went to court and stalled the whole process. Exactly. So why do we now have an electoral commission coming out there to tell us at a press conference 
that voting will end at 3 p.m. Why is that? The rule and is at that what point in time did she decide to put that information out?